Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School for Hopkinton Hillers softball on HCAM. This afternoon, it's a crucial battle between the 13 and 1 Norton Lancers and the 11 and 1 Hopkinton Hillers. The first and only time these two teams met this season, the Hillers got the road victory over Norton. One to nothing, and for those of you that follow TVL softball, of course you'll realize that Norton has one of the best, if not maybe the best, pitcher in the state in junior, Kelly Nelson. She has a .18 ERA on the season, and she has started every single game this year, a 10-1 and record overall. And she is just an unbelievable pitcher, has struck out 196 hitters throughout the season, but the Hillers, the lone team to take down Norton this season. As for the Hopkinton Hillers on the mound, it's Heather Hawley, and she's having a great season as well. She pitched in the victory over Medfield just yesterday, which we had for you on HCAM. It was a six to four win for the Hillers. A two-run home run walk-off by Lindsey Whittles helped the Hillers improve on the season to 11 and one. And now Heather Hawley is out there and ready to face the first Norton hitter. It's Alexandra Frontino, the shortstop, and the first pitch just outside a one and zero count. Let's take a look at the Norton batting order. Alexandra Frontino, the shortstop, up right now. Steph Noski, the third baseman, batting second as that one's high. Nicole Granger, the catcher, batting third. Olivia Peterson at first base in the cleanup role. Kelly Nelson, the pitcher, batting fifth. Olivia Menyo, the second baseman, batting sixth, as this is hit down the third base side and foul. Batting seventh, it's Leah Butner, the right fielder. Eighth, it's Megan Vignani, the designated player. And batting ninth, Taylor Sabati, the center fielder. And playing left field, the odd man out of the batting order, Jennifer Karamanica. That pitch is in there for a strike. Two and two is the count. We'll take a look at the Hillers Diamond in just a moment as Holly delivers. That one is just outside. First, I want to tell you Mike Tarosian on camera this afternoon. Larry Sacklad and myself, Tom Nappy, on the call for Hopkinton Hillers Softball on HCAM. And that is going to be a walk to hitter number one of the day as Alexandra Frontino. Gets the pass to first. That'll bring up Stefanoski, the third baseman. Let's take a look at the Hillers diamond. Heather Hawley is the pitcher. Jillian Cedia, the catcher. At first base, Madison Abbott. Second baseman, Emily Whalen is back in action after missing the game yesterday due to sickness. And the wind up and the pitch. And that one is in there for a strike. The shortstop is Molly Bennett. Over at third base, it is Emma Murphy. We'll get you the outfield after this pitch as Holly's ready to deal. The bunt up the middle towards the third baseline now. The throw over, they get one. Lead runner advances. A five to three for Noski. Frontino pushed up to second. From left to right for the Hillers, Lindsey Whittles, Katie Holly, Julia DiBenedetto. As now coming to the plate for the Lancers is the catcher, Nicole Granger. Norton has been performing well offensively this season, as that one's outside. A 454 batting average as a team. And the wind picking up a little bit at the start of this one. Temperatures in the high 50s. Temperature was about 59 degrees according to the HCAM Weather Center. As the umpire will signal over to the infield ump for that one, and it's ball two, two and oh. Seeing if Granger went there. Should be interesting to see what factor this wind will play as it was blowing pretty good at the start of this one. Two and one to Granger. Emma Murphy playing even with the bag. Just in case the runner from second wants to dash down, she's not backpedaling to the bag and trying to find it. Up the middle it goes into center field, drops down, runner being waved around third. The throw home is going to get away from the catcher. One nothing, Norton, Granger up to second on the throw and they're having trouble tracking it down. She's gonna go all the way to third base. And that one should have been handled by the catcher. 
It was a good throw, but it got by her, and Frontino scores. Granger over to third. One out, one on, one in for Norton. Now bring up the cleanup hitter, the first baseman, Olivia Peterson. Oh, a rare mistake there behind the plate by Cedia. That one's fouled away. Of course, it's always tough to try to get to that powerful throw coming in from center field in that situation. Peterson awaits the pitch, fouled away. The boys could learn a little bit from the uh, girls team. They're backing up and moving on every pitch. Olivia Peterson, the team leader for Norton. A 500 batting average on the season, 23 for 46 overall. That one just outside. She's played in 13 of the 14 games. She has scored 15 runs, driven in 24, has a couple home runs to her credit. Dangerous hitter. The one-two pitch. Up the middle, fielded by Whalen, throw to first, and they will get her, but another Norton run is in. She gets the job done. A sacrifice RBI ground out for the cleanup hitter. Madison Abbott's uh, foot was off the bag when she took the throw from Emily Whalen. But was able to get her foot down before the runner hit the bag. Nice play by Ms. Abbott. Kelly Nelson at the play now for Norton. There's strike one. With that microscopic ERA from Nelson, .18, two runs. Also a good hitter, 400 on the season. That one just inside. She is 16 for 40 overall, has scored eight runs, driven in 12, five doubles, two triples. Swinging strike there. Fouled away. One and two remains the count. Two in for Norton already, two outs. That one just inside, two and two. Dominican University has a find in Heather Hawley. She'll be playing softball there next year. They certainly do, as that one smacked down the left side foul. Count remains two and two. Good battle here between Heather Hawley and Kelly Nelson, pitcher versus pitcher. Nelson's been starting for Norton since she was a freshman. Was one of the top pitchers in the state her sophomore year and was towards the top her freshman year. And now is at the top. That one's fouled away. Heather's yeah, trying to adjust speeds against Nelson. And not coming in with the number one. Larry, we were briefly talking about this before the game, all the rain and how affected the schedules have been. This is the Hillers' third game in a row. It's Norton's fourth game in a row. And that certainly takes a toll, especially on the pitchers from a softball standpoint. Well, uh, the baseball team, you can't, definitely can't go back-to-back -back games, but softball pitching is an underhand sport. That's the way you naturally walk, so it's not putting that much extra stress on the arm. That I don't know people walking with their arms overhead. It's fouled away. Well, of course, in uh, softball, you're typically using the same pitcher as the count fills up. Baseball, you usually have a few arms you could go to. That one's fouled away. I notice Cedia isn't trying to frame the ball as much as she did yesterday. She must like the call she's getting from the umpire. A good amount of pitches thrown already by Heather Hawley in this inning. Good battle here with Nelson. And Heather Hawley will come out on top of the battle as she strikes out Nelson, but not before. The Norton Lancers plate two runs. It's 2-0 Norton as we head to the bottom of the first. Bottom of the first inning, a 2-0 lead for the Norton Lancers to start things off, and that is certainly a... Good way to start things off for Norton. Of course, Hopkinton gave the Lancers 
their only loss of the season so far and all kinds of action going on here at Hopkinton High School. You got the track meet up above us and of course the baseball team in action as well. The JV baseball team is at practice I believe so it is a great sports day here at Hopkinton High School and of course all the teams affected by all the rain that has struck the area early in this spring sports season. A packed schedule for just about everybody throughout the TVL. The Hillers coming up to bat. Let's take a look at their order. Katie Holly will lead off. She's playing center field. Julia Di Benedetto is batting second, playing right field. Lindsay Whittles batting third, playing left field. Heather Holly, the cleanup hitter, pitching. Molly Bennett, the shortstop, batting fifth. Emma Murphy, the third baseman, batting sixth. Jillian Cedia, the catcher, batting seventh. Maddie Abbott at first base, batting eighth. Emily Whalen, the second baseman, batting ninth. As Katie Holly will step in to face. Kelly Nelson, a .18 ERA, 10 and one on the season. And there's a strike, blazes it by her. Let's take a look at the Norton Diamond. Olivia Peterson, the first baseman, Nicole Granger behind the plate. At second base, Olivia Menyo. Alexandra Frontino at short, Stepnoski at third base, a swing strike there, 0-2. From left to right, Jennifer Karamanica, Taylor Sabati in center field, Leah Butner, the right fielder. The 0 2 pitch. And that is strike three, but it got by the catcher. Throw down to first. They got her. One away. I'll bring up Julia Di Benedetto, the right fielder. She seems to feature a rise ball, which looks awful good out of the hand. And then you swing, and then you find out it's six inches over your bat. There's a strike. Yeah, she puts certainly a lot of. Speed on it as well, good velocity, some good spin. Swing strike. Looked like her drop pitch. She doesn't throw a lot out of the strike zone either. Usually leaves it right down the middle. See it hit it. And here's strike three. Two up, two down. Adds to her strikeout total for the year. Kelly, uh, Nelson has, I believe it was 196. I'll get my handy notes out and look that over as Whittles takes strike one. The hero of yesterday's action. Nelson set to deal. And it is indeed 196 strikeouts on the season coming into this game. One and one. And actually, the past two games or it was the game before uh, yesterday, the two games before Norton's game yesterday, which Nelson pitched really well yesterday as well, but the two games before that, she pitched perfect games and struck out 20 hitters in each of those games. Pretty impressive, to say the least. And there's another strike to Whittles, and that will do it for inning number one. Nelson strikes out the side. We will head to the top of the second. Norton leading Hopkinton two to nothing on HCAN. Top half of the second inning, Norton leading Hopkinton two to nothing. Heather Holly back out there in the pitcher's circle. Livia Menyo, the second baseman at bat. And she will take a strike. Kelly Nelson struck out the side for Norton in the bottom of the first. She's done that quite a few times this season. That one just inside, one and one. Holly set the deal. That one just outside, two and one. I like the strong hands of uh, the freshman, Julia Cedi, is just holding the ball there for the umpire, not being demonstrative. He wants to give him that extra look. That's it in the air to left field. That's gonna drop down, roll all the way to the fence. Around first goes Menyo to second, and that is a stand-up double for the second baseman. That'll bring up Leah Butner, the right fielder. Perfectly placed double. Butner steps in, takes a strike. Heather's got a work cut out for her with this Norton lineup with a runner already on base, scoring position. This is hit up the left side foul. 
Heather Hawley having a pretty good season in the pitcher's circle as well. Nine and one overall. A 160 ERA. 11 appearances, 11 games started, seven complete games, including the victory against Medfield yesterday. That's hit foul, 0-2. And, and Larry, I believe you got an update from the uh, baseball game against Norton. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, my uh, sources tell me it's four to nothing. Norton, two outs in the second inning. That's unfortunate. How about the Lancers baseball team? They uh, have been kind of irrelevant for a while, but as this one gets by the catcher, Cedia, and the, and the runner, Menyo on second is up to third. So wild pitch there, and that'll make it one and two. The Norton baseball team, they've come a long way since last season. That is an up and coming program baseball wise. That one's fouled away, count remains one and two. And of course the Hillers baseball team has come a long way since last season as well. Some great talent on that team under first year head coach, obviously not first year in his life head coach, but first year in a while head coach, Steve Simos. That one's down low and a good job by Cedia keeping it in front of her, two and two. And of course this Hillers softball team as a first year head coach as well. Coach Soderberg, he has assisted this program for a few years. Took a year off last season and now back, head coach Scott Soderberg. That one's fouled away. And Norton led by head coach Wade Lazat, who has done wonders for this Norton program. Of course they have a great pitcher in Kelly Nelson, but also some great offensive players. One of the top offensive teams in the state as well. That one's fouled away. Hillers are going to find this Norton team hard to beat today. Yeah, falling down 2 0 against Kelly Nelson is pretty difficult to overcome. But fortunately for the Hillers, still very early in this one, so you just never know. That one's fouled away, smacked into the woods. Left fielder couldn't get any closer to the foul line in left, That's leaving a big gap in left center. Sun's starting to peek out a little bit here. This is hit in the air to the left side. Fair territory, Whittles ranges over, makes the catch, runner from third tag, she's gonna score. Job well done by Butner, three nothing Norton. A sacrifice RBI, fly out, scores Menyo. That'll bring up Megan Vignani, the designated player. Well, if Norton wins this game, of course, we're still a long way to go here. If they win this game, Norton and Hopkinton would be tied at the top of the TVL. That one inside, 1-0. Oh. Hiller's only loss of the season is a non-league loss, uh, non loss to Milford. Up the middle, fielded by the third baseman, throw to first, they got her. Five to three goes Vignani. Referee's almost automatic down there at third base. With a freshman catcher, she's relieved from putting on the tools of ignorance. So they put her over at third base. Bring up Taylor Sabati, the center fielder. Sabati at 262 on the year, and we'll put this one down third baseline foul. A lot of these junior Soft warning for some of the girls, seniors, will be uh, off to the prom tomorrow night. Yep, no games tomorrow. That one upstairs. Of course, you can see the junior prom grand march on the HCAM YouTube page. There's a strike. And of course, they have it live on HCAM as well every year. That was a perfect example of Cedia holding the ball an extra second for the umpire. I think she got a strike out of that deal. That's fouled away, Sabati staying alive. One and two. Take a look at both teams' schedules and let you know how they've both done lately as there is a strikeout and that is going to wrap up the top half of the second. Norton does play to another run. It is 3-0 as we head to the bottom of the inning. Bottom of the second inning, the Hillers coming back up to the plate. 4-5 and 6 due up after Kelly Nelson struck out the side in the bottom of the first. Heather Holly, Molly Bennett, Emma Murphy 
to the plate for the Hillers. Right up and the pitch, fouled away. Right, it's the first uh, piece of contact the Hillers have had off Nelson. She's not gonna give an inch at the plate. Pitcher versus pitcher here. That one's down low, one and one. Well, to recap the Hillers' season so far, they started the season off with a road win, 25-1 to against Dover Sherbourne. It was supposed to be a home game, but turned into a road game, swinging strike there. One and two. And then at Medfield, a 13-0 win at Norton. They got that one to nothing win. 3-0 at that point, and then a 9-4 loss to Milford here at home, as there's a strikeout number four for Kelly Nelson, and Molly Bennett will come to the plate. And a 3-2 win against Archbishop Williams here at home. 9-1 over Hollison on the 24th at home. Then at Ashland, a 13-0 win on the 27th. There's a strike. Then at Medway, a 7-3 win in eight innings. Nelson set the deal. There's a strike. 13 to win, a 13-1 win over Westwood on the third. And then at Ashland, a 6-4 win on the 5th of May. And then against Archbishop Williams, a huge win on the road. 5-1. to one. And then yesterday, here at home against Medfield, a 6-4 to four win. As Molly Bennett strikes out two away, Emma Murphy to the plate. Yes, uh, Nelson's been impressive with her location. She started Holly off at the knees, went to the belt, went to the chest. That's fouled Except away. for the foul tip. Definitely knows what she's doing out there. Certainly does, and it's been fun uh, seeing her freshman year, sophomore year. You could really tell that she's just developing her skills and her abilities are maturing and she's just becoming a better and better pitcher every game. This one's hit in the air, foul. That's out in the Death Valley. You think the colleges will be coming calling or you think they've already done so? Oh, I'm sure they've done so. I think they've been uh, looking at her since her freshman year. Going for strikeout number six upstairs. One and two. Emma can't hit a six run home run, so anything in the field of play will work right now. There's a swinging strike, and Kelly Nelson has gone through six hillers via the strikeout. It is a 3 0 Norton lead as we head to the top of the third. Top half of the third inning, a 3-0 lead for the Norton Lancers as they will come back up to the plate with the top of their lineup. Alexandra Frontino, the shortstop, Stepnowski, the third baseman, and Nicole Granger, the catcher, to face Heather Holly. As this is hit up the middle, over the reach of the shortstop, in the left center it goes, and that is a leadoff base hit to start off the third inning, a single for Frontino. Stepnowski, the third baseman, will step in. Just over the reach, Matty Abbott, who did get some good ups on that one. We'll take a look at the Norton schedule so far this season in just a moment. That one upstairs, runner thought about taking off from first, but she's back. Norton started their season on April 3rd with a 13-0 win at home against Middleborough, and then at Medway, a 5-0 victory. Then at Medfield, a 13-1 victory on the road. That one just outside, 2-0. Then at home against Acton Boxborough, 14-1 win. Then the loss to Hopkinton, their only loss of the season back on April 13th. That was a home game for Norton. That one just outside. Then a 7-2 win at Ashland on the 24th, followed by an 8-0 win against Holliston at home on the 27th. And on the 28th, 11-0 over Millis at home. And that's upstairs, so that will be a walk for Noski. Frontino up to second. Then a 19 to nothing win at Westwood on May 1st. Two to nothing over Bellingham at home on May 3rd. And seven nothing over Medway on the fourth. And then one of the 20 strikeout games for Nelson came after that as there's a strike to Granger. 
It was a 3-0 victory against Medfield at home. Nelson struck out 20 hitters in that game. A bunt up the middle, slow roller picked up by the first baseman over the head of Whalen. It goes, and everybody's going to advance. A run will score for the Lancers. Frontino is in. The silver lining in that play is Julia De Benedetto had been backing up first base. She knows this field. She knows the bounces off the fence, and no further damage could be done with the Norton runners. Aaron throw there, and everybody advances. So now you got runners on second and third. A run in up the middle, and that's going to get through the dive of the shortstop. One run in, and the second run will be held up. It is 5-0 Lancers as Noski scores. Up to third is Granger on the single by Peterson. She advanced to second on the throw in. So second and third now, still no outs in the inning. Swinging strike. Lancers, I think, maybe a little hungry for revenge today. Continuing on with their schedule, May 4th was the 7-0 victory over Medway, then 20 strikeouts on May 8th against Medfield, that one's foul. Then another 20 strikeout game for Kelly Nelson on the 9th at Somerset Berkeley. That was a 1-0 victory for Norton against a very good Somerset Berkeley team. And then just yesterday, they took down Dover Sherborne 12 to nothing at home. That was a push bunt up the first base line. Looks like they want to just scratch out a run here, run there. That was fouled away. Is that my Murphy is holding the runner on third. And nope. prepared to cut a runner down on the plate if a ball gets to her. That is hit in the air foul. I think the Lancers looking to make a statement here after losing the Hopkinton once this season. And so far they have. That one down low. Good job by Cedia, keeping that one in front. I think Heather will have a short leash today if the score remains the way it is. Well, with all the games that the Hillers have played lately, I think she should, because that one's fouled away. It's a good game to, uh, if she continues to struggle, maybe get someone else a little bit more experience on the mound. Or I should say the pitcher's circle. The 2-2, upstairs. You know that Heather had to want this game coming in against Nelson. It hasn't to be so far. That one's fouled away. Well, it's always uh, very difficult to fall behind early against Nelson and try to work your way back. She's just such a dominant pitcher. But I think the, the Hillers have actually gotten to Nelson and beat Nelson more than any other team. As this one's hit into center field, that'll drop in for a hit, one run in, a second run being waved around, the throw home is in time, and we have a pickle between third and home, and they are going to get the out, trying to score. Nice throw in from center field by Katie Holly. Perfect rotation with the fielders. One abandons the base, one covers the base. So Heather Holly got the tag out at home. Credit Kelly Nelson with the RBI single. Peterson thrown out. It is 6 0 Norton, however. And coming up to bat is Olivia Menyo, the second baseman, and might have some kind of change here as the Norton coach, Trav Wade Lazat, goes over to talk to the umpire. Think you'll have a runner for Nelson? I nope. think so. I think so. They don't even want to risk her getting hurt. So they will have. Uh, Pinch runner, and they are going to bring in Janet Jolly, who's a freshman. And they usually do this for Nelson. And she actually does have a good speed, but they just don't want her running if she doesn't have to. And I don't blame them. Protect your assets. Absolutely. And this is pushed in a left field. That'll drop in, and everybody's going to be safe. And that is going to be a single for Menyo. And the pinch runner for Nelson pushes up to second. So, actually, excuse me, up to third. So it is two on with one out. 
And Leah Butner coming to the plate. The rally may continue for Norton. She's way up in the box there. I might think a bunt. And there is a check swing. Well, she did hold. 1-0. and Runner from first thought about taking off. Menio does have speed. She had a double in the second and scored a run in that inning. Bunt fouled away. One and one. It's a good call on the bunt there, Larry. Thank you very much. Nostradamus is my <laughs> middle name. But they may, may put on a steal here and try and get uh, Norton Runner in a pickle at the very least. Let's say speed on the corners. Holly delivers. This one is crushed foul down the left side. And Norton uh, Runner was taking that bag whether the Hillers wanted to or not. Leah Butner has played in all 14 games. She's a senior for Norton. A 300 batting average, 12 for 40. 11 runs scored, six driven in, three doubles on the season to her credit. Holly deals, fouled away. Count remains one and two. She's got an uh, interesting approach there. She holds the bunt out in front of her and brings it back and swings. Almost like she's gonna slash bunt or slash hit. And that'll do it as coach will have a visit with uh, Holly. Actually, it's just a comp it's just a talk on the mound here in the pitcher circle among the infielders. We'll talk things over. I think the coach saw the uh, runner at first take off without any uh, defense against her. Maybe they'll tighten things up or uh, get the play they want down. Coach Soderberg with some words of encouragement for Heather Hawley as Butner set to step back into the batter's box. One and two count. Hawley set to deal. Upstairs, runner from first taken off, the throw over to third, and that was a great decision by Cedia not to throw to second. They were trying to get her to do that to try to get that runner from third home, but she did not fall for it. Just give Menio the stolen base. Did she come up lame going into third base? Yeah, she or might going, have. Going back to the bag? Yeah, Coach Lazada over there talking with the pinch runner, uh, Janet Jolly, came in for Kelly Nelson. She seems to be okay. Butter will step back in this time with a two and two count. And I'm sure that's exactly what Coach Soderberg was talking about in that meeting on the pitcher's circle. That one's fouled away. Nobody was surprised on the Hiller side. They knew who was going to get the ball should the runner take off. Good decision there. Holly awaits the sign. She deals. That's down low. Good job by Cedia. Full count now. Runners on second and third. A walk here would load up the bases with one out. Fouled away towards the Norton bench area. And that's why they have the fences there in front of the bench area. Holly deals, that's fouled away into the woods. Count remains full, good battle here. Leah Butner had a sacrifice RBI fly out her last time up in the second inning. Holly delivers, that one's hit in the air, out of play. I'm kind of surprised at the Hiller defense there and I'm playing in, they cut that important run off at the plate. Or maybe they're just conceding that run from third, getting it out. Two up on deck is the designated player, Megan Vignani. Swinging strike, Holly gets the strikeout. The run down to first, the throw in time. Nice job by Cedia, took a look at third to make sure Nelson, Nelson's pinch runner wasn't going to advance. Two away. Megan Vignani, the designated player, will step in. She 
Grounded out her last time up, 276 on the season. The sophomore Megan Vignani has played in all 14 games. Eight for 29 overall. Has driven in six runs, and this one is going to roll foul. I believe she hit that one off her foot. Had a lot of backspin on it. Yeah, she just barely got a piece of that one, nearly stayed fair. Vignani has also scored four runs. Runners on second and third, two outs. Holly trying to get out of this jam with no further harm done. That one inside, some speed though. One and one. Holly set to deliver, gets the sign she likes. Fouled away, one and two. Nani reaches, Taylor Sabati on deck. Two runs in the first for Norton, one in the second, and now three in the third. As th this is foul, a little bloop shot, just in front of the reach of Emma Murphy. For you HCAM viewers that uh, were planning to go to Ashland at 10 a.m. on Mother's Day, I believe that game has been postponed. Yeah, chances are that was going to get rained out anyway. Let's keep the moms happy on Sunday. Absolutely. That one just outside, two and two. Holly delivers. Hit in the air to center field, and it is right over to Katie Holly who will make the catch. And that will wrap up the top half of the third, but Norton does plate three more runs. It's six nothing Lancers as we head to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third inning, seven, eight, and nine due up for the Hillers. Julian CD of the catcher, Maddie Abbott at first base, and Emily Whalen, second baseman due up for their first time in this game. A six nothing Norton lead as Kelly Nelson set to deliver to Cedia. Lancers scored two runs in the first, one in the second, three in the third. Showing off the offense here this afternoon. Of course, Kelly Nelson pitching unbelievable so far. She's faced six hitters and struck them all out. CD will step in. And CD has been busy behind the plate so far. Just take ball one there. Nelson's got to have been professionally trained. The type of velocity and poise she shows out there. Maybe she's a client of Planet Fist, uh, Planet Fist Fast Pitch That's in Uxbridge. It's filed away. I'm sure she does extensive off-season work. There's a swinging strike, one and two. Julian Cedia, a freshman, a 435 average on the season. She that was is. a beautiful changeup. Certainly was. Nelson deals upstairs. Going for the speed on that one. Do have warm up action for the Hillers. Julia Di Benedetto warming up. Perhaps we'll see her if Heather Holly runs into any more trouble. Time out here by the hitter, tie up her cleat. 2-2 pitch by Nelson, and this is hit in the air. It is in foul territory and caught. That was handled nicely along the right side for the first out, and that is the first out that is not a strikeout for the Hillers. Maddie Abbott swings that strike one. Here's strike two. Go 
Oh, and two. Hit in the air, foul, and out of play. Now remains 0 and 2. That was an excellent play by the first baseman. Not being their own field. Was able to range over towards the fence. Nelson deals on the ground, third base side, throw to first, not a problem. Five to three goes Abbott. Emily Whalen to step in. Oh, they're making some contact now. Emily Whalen did not play against Medfield yesterday as she was battling sickness. Now back in the lineup, down the first base line, picked up by the first baseman, a three unassisted ground out to wrap up the bottom of the third. It is 6-0 Norton as we head to the fourth. Top half of the fourth inning, the Lancers back up to the plate. 9-1-2 and two due up, Taylor Sabati, the center fielder, Alexandra Frontino and Steph Noski. Tino the shortstop, Noski the third baseman. Heather Hawley back out there for another inning of work and we'll see what the leash is with her. Shall she run into any more trouble? She did seem to settle down a little bit though towards the end of the top of the third so perhaps she'll have some solid innings here. Strike one. Heather Hawley has done a nice job stepping in after Bree Mirabli graduated last season. A bunt here, up the middle, fielded by the third baseman, throw to first, not in time. Good speed up the line by Sabati. Perfectly placed bunt in between home and third. There really wasn't much that Emma Murphy could do with that. And that was a good attempt by Murphy getting to that. She really had to run down that line fast as Rontino takes strike one. Lancers can afford to take some chances now being up six to nothing. They certainly can. That is pushed foul. 0 and two. Holly deals just outside. One and two. Looks like Cedia wants to snap a ball down to first base, a back pick, but can't afford to have a ball get overthrown and have the runner get third base. That one's out of play. Well, I think uh, how aggressive the Lancers are offensively. I think they're going for uh, the quick runs here. That one is just over the reach of Murphy, and that is going to be a base hit. And she almost had that one, had a back pedal, and then it kind of blew around a little bit awkwardly. So a single for Frontino, Sabati up to second, Noski to the plate, no outs, two on. That was a weird blooper there. Perfectly placed bunt and a perfectly placed bloop. And this is hit in the air to shallow center field and ranging in to make the catch is Katie Hawley. That was a great catch by Hawley, but the runner from third is going to try to score and they will. And now the runner at first nearly caught in the pickle, but she's back to the bag. And she is going to be called safe at first. And no, that was no catch. Noski thought, I think she was out. They got Frontino out, Noski to first. All right, now the umpire's saying she's out, so mass confusion here. So that ended up being two outs, I believe. And does that run count? I think it does. So I think the run scores, and you get Frontino and Noski both out. But I'm not sure, was that a fly out, Larry? What did you see there? I think she caught the ball and on the transfer out of her glove, the ball went on the, the grass and I think that's what the uh, infield uh, umpire saw. 
So then I imagine the uh, runner on third tagged up and came home while the others, almost like in a info fly situation where they're running at their own risk. So Noski, so you'd credit Noski with the sacrifice RBI fly out. And then I would. And then Frontino got thrown out because she never tagged. Correct. All right, we'll go with that. Two outs and a run in for Norton. And hold on, hold everything here. Noski's back to first, so she's not out. So they, they're calling Sabati out at the plate, I think. There's going to be more discussion here. Now the Hillers coach Soderberg saying two outs, the umpire saying one. If it's one out, that means the run scores. If it's two outs, that means the run doesn't score. And the umpire wants to see the book. He's going to consult they, with his uh, fellow umpire. Well, this is the most confusing moment, I think, that has happened. So it wasn't a catch in the outfield. Runners out at second. It was one out, and the run that's crossed home plate, I believe, counts. It would have to count if it's a drop. Yep, 7 nothing is the score. Norton leading. So the run does count, so this works out for Norton. I thought she caught it. I'd love to see that one again, but You'll have maybe a chance. she did. I'm certainly gonna look at that one. That was a confusing play, or confusing sequence of events to say the least. There's a strike there to Granger. So Noski is on first base, so there's actually only one out. Frontino was the only one out, and Noski gets the base hit. I'm ruling that a base hit because that was a very difficult play to try to make for Holly. She really had a run in to try to make that one. And she nearly made it. She might have even made it, but of course it was ruled a hit. A swinging strike there, 0 and 2. So an RBI single for Noski is the is what you want to put in your scorebooks if you're scoring at home. Holly deals, swinging strike, and that is. Maybe she got a piece of it. They ruled it foul. Okay, two and two. So there's one out, one on, one in. And that is just outside, full count. Stefanoski at first base. Down low, there's the walk. Throw to second, it doesn't matter though, it was a walk, but they threw anyway and actually nearly got her. So you got first and second now. One out, Olivia Peterson, the first baseman to the plate. Stoppage, the Norton coach, Wade Lazat, wants to talk to the infield dump. I'm still, I'm still blown away by that whole sequence of events, Larry. That was unbelievable. Well, she rolled over, and she was showing you her back, and she showed me the ball. I thought she got it in her glove just before I hit the ground. And I thought she had uh, caught the ball and put the ball on the ground on the transfer. Of course, with two umps, it's... Not that easy all the time. Fouled away up the third base side. Some bad news from the upper field with the boys varsity team. They're down all. Norton six to one. All sorts of gremlins occurring with the varsity baseball team in the last few days. Holly set to deal. Swing strike there. Just oh got a little piece of it. Oh and two runners on first and second. Peterson having a pretty good day. Sacrifice RBI ground out in the first, a single in the third. Hit in the air, foul territory out of play. Count remains 0 and 2.
Well, Coach Soderberg has an embarrassment of Richards coming up behind. He's got five seniors here. That's about uh, less than 30% of his roster. And in the be air, leaving. that one's out of play. With players like Julia Cedia and uh, Julia De Benedetto as freshmen. Future looks bright for the Hillers. That certainly does. That one's fouled away. Of course, the big question mark will be who will take over on the mound after Heather Hawley graduates. Hmm? That one's fouled away. And two. Good battle here between Holly and Peterson as it's been in all three at bats. Holly gets the best of it this time. Two away. Nicely done. Pulled the string on that hitter. She was way out in front of it. Here's Nelson. Kelly Nelson will try to help her own cause here. Fouled away, 0 and 1. Two on, two outs. She does not get cheated. She goes up there hacking. 400 average for the junior. Great hitter and pitcher, of course. Looks like uh, we'll have a pinch runner here. In for Granger. It is going to be Christina Dune, the junior. Pinch runner for Norton. Set to deliver. Hit in the air at a play foul. 0-2 to Nelson. Well, Holly seems to have settled down a little bit in these past couple of innings. That one's fouled away. And she has thrown a lot of pitches out there throughout these four innings. A lot of battles with these Norton hitters. So I wouldn't be surprised this being the third game in a row for the Hillers if the leash is uh, pretty quick with her if she runs into any more problems. Down low. Runners leading off of the bags. One and two. Holly deals. Hit in the air, a high fly ball over to left field. Ranging over is the center fielder, Katie Holly, to make the catch. And that will wrap up the top half of the fourth. Norton does plate another run. It is seven to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth inning, top of the order for the Hillers, who trail seven to nothing against the Lancers. Katie Holly, Julia DiBenedetto, and Lindsay Whittles do up. Holly struck out her first and only time up in the first. Now she'll get another chance here. The Hillers had three hitters in each inning so far. No hitter going for Kelly Nelson. 0-1 is the count now to Holly. Julia De, Julia De Benedetto back warming up. Didn't have my Cheerios this morning, Tom, so I'm a little tongue tied. <laughs> Nelson deals. And that is strike two fouled away. Got a piece. Nelson delivers ball one. Six strikeouts in the game so far for Nelson. And check swing, did she hold? No. Oh, oh my goodness. I thought she held actually. Uh, you got. Uh, that was close, it was close. I'll agree with you, Tom. The umpire did not have a good view of the barrel of the bat. I thought she just was able to hold it. There's strike one at Di Benedetto. Little indecision on that with Julia, as to whether swing or hold. 
There's strike two down the pipe. Nelson deals, strike three. Eight strikeouts for Nelson. Lindsey Whittles to the plate. Rumor has it there's some Boston media down here from one of the papers checking out Nelson. Strike one there to Whittles. 250 batting average on the season for Whittles. She had the walk-off home run, her first home run of the season against Medfield yesterday. There's strike two. Two-run blast over the right field fence. She crushed that ball too. That one just outside, one and two. Benedetto going back to warming up, so I'm thinking she's coming in next inning. Of course, we'll have to wait and see. There's strike three to Whittles. Nelson strikes out the side for the third time this afternoon. It is seven nothing Norton as we head to the top of the fifth. Well, Abbott is out. Top half of the fifth inning, all kinds of changes for the Hillers, including Julia Di Benedetto, the pitcher. Comes in for Heather Hawley. There's strike one to Olivia Menyo. Over at first base is Heather Hawley. She stays in the game. Second base is Kendall Copley. And then in right field, it's Emily Whalen moving over from second base. That one upstairs. One and one. Julia De Benedetto and Jillian Cedia will be seeing a lot of each other next year, the following year, and the following year after that as battery mates. One down low, two and one. Both freshmen. Who knows, Di Benedetto could be uh, next year's pitcher. Up the third base side, over to the shortstop, throw to first is low and it's in time. So they got the job done. Matty Abbott throwing over, six to three for Menyo. That'll bring up Leah Butner, the right fielder. That was a nice pick by Holly at first. Yeah, it was a nice job there. Up the middle, that's going to drop into center field for a base hit. A one out single for Butner. Now stepping in for the Lancers is Megan Vignani, the designated player. Julia Di Benedetto does have a little bit of a pitching experience this season. She's made three appearances as this is up the middle, loved by the second baseman, throw to first and they get one. Four to three goes Agnani, putting her up to second. Taylor Sabati will come up to the plate, the center fielder. Di Benedetto, the freshman, has pitched eight innings coming into this game. Given up four hits, two runs, both of them earned, nine strikeouts. 175 ERA for the freshman. So she's going to get some good experience here, I think. 1 0 to Sabati. Two outs, one on. Hit in the air, foul out of play. 1 and 1. Benedetto set to deal just outside. Two and one, but her back to the bag at second. That's followed into the catcher's mask. Two and two. Or excuse me, the umpire's mask. Fortunately, he's okay. Run into both of them. Body one for two on the day for Norton. She hit a single and scored a run in the fourth, struck out in the second. Hit in the air over to left field and placed perfectly is Lindsey Whittles to make the catch. And that'll wrap up the fifth inning and that is the first offensive inning for Norton where they don't play to run. It is seven to nothing Norton as we head to the bottom of the fifth. 
Bottom of the fifth inning, Heather Holly set to step in against Nelson. Do up four, five, and six, Heather Holly, Molly Bennett, Emma Murphy. And we have a stoppage here. This is the uh, umpire stoppage, I believe. Heather Holly was the pitcher. Now she's over at first base since Di Benedetto came in and pitched a clean inning on the top of the fifth. Lily and Morningstar taking over coaching duties at first base. It's nice to see her back. Yeah, and they're certainly looking forward to her getting back into action. She's been injured for a few weeks. Oh, and one. One up high, one and one. Last season's head coach, Kylie Murray, taking in the action, as well as the assistant coach, Bruce Elliott. Nelson deals. There's a strike, one and two. Nelson delivers, fouled away. Now remains one and two. So the ball coming in with that type of velocity really brings those fast twitch muscles into play. Nelson delivers up the middle and a slow roller picked up by the second baseman and they get the out. Four to three goes Hawley. Molly Bennett, the shortstop, will come up to the plate. Winging strike. Nine strikeouts on the afternoon for Nelson. That one's low, one and one. Nelson delivers. There's a strike. Two and two. Bennett deals. That one outside, full count. Fastball there. And there's strike three. Tenth strikeout of the afternoon for Nelson. Emma Murphy to come up to the plate. Well, despite playing four games in a row for Norton, it's been no problem for Nelson so far. There's a strike. She has pitched, I believe, every inning of those games. Out of the way. Moral victory here would be to get a base runner. The way she's throwing. Set to deliver. There, strike three. She strikes out two of the three hitters in that inning, and that will wrap up the fifth to the sixth we go. It is Norton seven, Hopkinton nothing on H can. Top of the sixth inning, Norton leading Hopkinton seven to nothing. We have a new first baseman, Elizabeth Liberta takes over for Heather Hawley. Holly will take the rest of the afternoon off. And we'll go around the diamond for the Hillers just to refresh your memory as there were some changes last inning as well. But it's Liz Liberta over at first, Kendall Copley at second. Shortstop is Maddie Abbott, Emma Murphy still at third. There's a strike to Frontino, Jillian Cedia behind the plate. Left to right, Lindsay Whittles, Katie Hawley, and Emily Whalen in right field. That one down low, one and one. Julia hit her hip with that pitch. 
That happens from time to time. Of course, Julia DiBenedetto out there for her second inning of work. Gave up no runs and one hit in the first inning of work. There's a strike. It was a pretty solid inning. It's a tough part of the Norton lineup for Di Benedetto, and this could be next year's pitcher right here. Up the third base side and foul. Count remains one and two. Emma Murphy read that ball foul all the way. No panic over there. Frontino, Noski, and Granger do up for Norton. There's a strike. She gets the K. Bring up Steph Noski, the third baseman. One for two on the day. She walked and scored a run in the third and hit a RBI single in the fourth. Down low. Well, the problem for the Lancers in the past couple of seasons was that they've struggled offensively, but this season they have a whole lot of offense. It'll be very interesting to watch them going forward and to see how far they go in the postseason as that one's inside, 2-0. and Camera may be able to pick up the sound of Julia's arm hitting her hip. You want to release the ball as close to the hip as possible. And this is hit up the left side. That'll drop in on the liner, a single for Noski. Cole Granger, the catcher, to come to the plate. One on, one out. To Benedetto awaits the sign, and there's strike one. Fouled away, 0-2. Too late on that pitch. Also, last year's Hillers pitcher, Bree Mirabli, taking in the action today as well. I'm sure she would love to get out there and face this Norton team. Once again. They got an extra uniform in the bag for her. Why not? Hit in the air in the infield, and it is gloved by the shortstop, Molly Bennett, two away. Bring up Olivia Peterson, the cleanup hitting first baseman. Sacrifice RBI in the first, a single in the third, and struck out in the fourth. One on, two outs, runner on first. That one outside. Probably last season was able to shut out Norton, got the victory here at Hopkinton High School. And they also went 2-0 against Norton last year. That one down low. Benedetto deals down low and that bounces in front of the plate and Noski will take the free pass over to second and actually they're going to say it hit the batter so hit by pitch. Two on, two outs. Kelly Nelson to the plate. Staying in the game. She's not coming out. After this, Norton will get a few well-needed days off. Up the middle, glove by the shortstop. The throw to first is wild into the fence. It goes, everybody's safe. One run is in, and the lead runner over to third. It's 8 nothing Norton. And of course, that run's certainly not earned. An errant throw there. A little indecisiveness by Kendall Copley. Noski scores, Peterson up to third. Nelson reaches on the error. It was a little double clutch by the shortstop there. We'll have a pinch runner. Janet Jolly back in the game once again. A pinch run for Kelly Nelson, as expected. Olivia Menyo, the second baseman at bat. 
Third base side foul, 0-1. Runners on the corners, two outs. Be Benedetto set to deal. Upstairs. Oh no, in there for a strike, excuse me. One and two. Benedetto, some good movement on her fastball. Bobbled by the third baseman. No play is made and a run scores. Another error. Peterson scores on the error by the third baseman. Nelson, pinch runner Jolly up to second. And of course, Menyo reaches on the error. Second error of the inning by the Hillers. Leah Butner to the plate. Third base side, that's past the dive of the third baseman, and that is a foul ball. Emma Murphy wasn't playing too far off the bag, so there's a little room for a base hit. Two on, two outs. And a stoppage here is Coach Lazat talking to the infield umpire. I don't know whether he's trying to appeal whether the ball is fair or foul, but it's the umpire's call all the way from home plate. I think that's exactly what he's doing. Hit in the air, out of play. That one was way up there. 0 oh 2. It's a mystery who goes and gets those balls. Di Benedetto set to deal. Upstairs. Eight nothing lead for Norton. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad bringing you Hiller's softball and H cam as this one gets by the catcher, Jillian Cedia. And both runners on base will advance. Jolly up to third. That's Nelson's pinch runner. And Menyo up to second. Mike Terosian on camera. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. And this game not going the way the Hillers would like it. But certainly a good learning experience here. Up the middle, over to third baseman. The throw to first in time. They got her. Five to three goes Butner. But Norton does plate another pair of runs due to errors. And as we head to the bottom of the six, it's Norton eight, Hopkinton nothing on HCAM. Nine nothing Norton. I apologize for saying eight nothing at the end of last inning. They got the scoreboard wrong in the outfield. Due up for the Hillers, seven, eight, and nine. Jillian Cedia, Maddie Abbott, and Emily Whalen to step in. Kelly Nelson back out there. She doesn't care about the lead. She wants the complete game. She's a competitor. She doesn't. I think ever want to come out of a game. 0-1. Oh she wants the no-hitter to boot. Oops. Well, it's the opposing team. I suppose I can mention it. Absolutely. And we'll have a stoppage here by the hitter. A little time. Tire cleat up. Four errors for the Hillers defensively. That's there's some uh, defensive stuff they'll certainly need to work on. And they had a few errors yesterday as well, but fortunately none were too costly. One and one to Cedia. And her only at bat today, she's flown out. Hit in the air, foul out of play, one and two. It's been three hitters every inning so far for the Hillers. No walks, no Hits given up, perfect game so far for Nelson. Swinging strike and down goes Cedia. 12th strikeout of the afternoon for Nelson. We'll have a pinch hitter here, or, uh, the relief coming in. Kendall Copley. Yeah, Kendall Copley takes strike one. Her first at bat today. 
Strike two. The Father John, an accomplished photographer for Hopkinton Athletics, all the sports. And that's fouled away. Copley stays alive. She deals, fouled away. That'd be a little intimidating for the hitter after watching uh, her teammates go up there without any success all afternoon. Well, she's uh, made contact a couple times. Got a pretty good battle going on here. Good experience. That one low, one and two. Had to have been a lot of fun for the Norton catcher all this year with all the strikeouts Nelson has put up on the board. Staying busy for sure. Down the first base side and foul. Trying to break up the no hitter there, but just a little bit too far to the right. And she got a piece of that one. Good battle. Now one upstairs, and the junior continuing to battle Nelson two and two. Nelson went from the change up, change up, change up to the heater. Made contact, and no, they're going to call her out. Went in the catcher's glove. That's why two away. And you can call that a strikeout. That's some bad luck there. Emily Whalen will step in. I'd like to see her drag one down the first base line. And she offered and pulled back. Yeah, one and oh. Might upset the Norton coach. She would have break up the no hitter with a bunt, but I personally don't care. 13 strikeouts for Nelson. There's a bunt up the middle. Nelson fields it, throw to first. She got it. One to three goes Whalen. That'll wrap up the sixth inning. To the seventh inning we go. It is 9 0 Norton on H Cam. Top half of the seventh inning. The Lancers coming up for their final time of the game, more than likely, as they have the comfortable 9 0 lead on the Hillers. Two runs in the first, a run in the second, three in the third, one in the fourth, two in the sixth for the Lancers. The Hillers have a little Mookie Betts, Andrew Benatendi. Sort of dance going out there in center field in between innings. Hillers have committed four errors, and two of those errors were the reason that the Lancers played it another couple runs in the sixth. That one's low. One and O oh to a pinch hitter for. Vignani. There's a ball down low. It's Janet Jolly at the plate. That one upstairs. Set to deal. And this is up the middle off the glove of the second baseman. Behind her it goes. She picks it up, but will not get the throw over in time. And Jolly will reach. And that was a difficult play to make, but probably should have had it. Runner on, no outs. And we'll have another pinch hitter for Norton. It's going to be Christina Dooney coming in. To pinch hit for Taylor Sabati. Emptying out the benches, Coach Lazat. Why not? And uh, an encouraging note for the Hillers, Julia Di Benedetto has pitched uh, pretty good in her three innings of work. <coughs> or in the, her first couple, two runs did score last inning, but those weren't her fault. So that one is in there for a strike. 
Oh, and one. Jolly over at first base. On the ground, up the middle, gloved by the pitcher, throw to first, they get the out, Jolly advances the second. One away, runner in scoring position. Alexandra Frontino, the shortstop to the plate. And there for a strike. Jolly, with a lot of speed, was looking to, for her opportunity to head over to third base. I think the sun low. has disappeared. Which Getting is a little cold. Which is pretty unfortunate. I would like the sun back right now. <laughs> Line up and the pitch. Third base side, bobbled by the third baseman. Throw to first, not in time. Everybody's safe. Runners on the corners, one out. Tough play to make. I hate to do it, but you have to give it an E5. Yep, I think so. It's the sixth error of the afternoon I got for the Hillers. They're competing with the boys up at field, too. They're having defensive gremlins. <laughs> that one right over towards us. Did you get that one, Mike? <laughs> I had no worries. I had 3D peer protection. <laughs> I caught that from my peripheral vision. And I wasn't sure where it was going. So I ducked out of the way. Overthrow by the catcher. I tried to run the score. I, I tried, oh, there we go. Run scores. On the E2. overthrow. Error there. Well, that's 10 nothing now. And I think they're just gonna play it out at this point. Or maybe play out the rest of the half inning, we'll see. They can call it at any time, I believe, once it's 10 to nothing. Coaches uh, would have that decision. De Benedetto delivers over to third base side. Throw to first. Will get the out. Lead runner advances to third. Frontino over to third. Five to three goes Noski. Two away. Nicole Granger, the catcher, will step in. Fouled away, 0-1. I'm sure the Hiller girls were really looking forward to this battle, but they knew that what they were up against, beating them one to nothing with a fireballer like Nelson on the mound. Up the middle in a center field, another run scores, an RBI single for Granger. Well, if you fall behind early against Nelson, it's really tough to rebound from that. Olivia Peterson will step in. Kelly Nelson is going to hit next, it appears. Hey, she's not coming out of this one. She is a dominant pitcher. Up the middle, into left field. That'll get through, and it's going to put two on. A single for Peterson, Granger to second. Kelly Nelson will step in and we'll have a conference in the pitcher circle. Do they really talk about anything in the pitcher circle or they're just taking a break? Uh, probably just some words of encouragement. Maybe what, maybe a breather. What'd you have for lunch today, that kind of thing? You know, uh, Deep Benedetto starting to struggle a little bit out there. Trying to get her confidence up to get out of this inning. Two outs, two on. Tough hitter coming to the plate. Forces are all around. a strike. I think the coaches want to get their last chances at Nelson and not just give her a no-hitter by default. This is hit in the air to left field and that's handled. Caught by Whittles and that will do it for the top half of the seventh. Two more runs in for the Lancers. 11 to nothing as we head to the bottom of the seventh. 
bottom of the seventh inning, the Hillers will get their final chance against Kelly Nelson. One, two, and three do up. Katie Ali, Julia Benedetto, and Lindsey Whittles. As the lefty steps in and awaits the pitch. The bun, third baseline, nearly caught, but foul. Noski came rushing in. She was ready for it. Nelson going for the complete game, no hitter. The bunt up the middle, and Nelson will turn around. Low throw to first, and Holly breaks up the no hitter. It gets by, she's gonna head to second, and they will not get the throw over to second in time. I'm, I'm giving that one a hit. That's I think a that base was a hit all the bunt. way. Yep. An errant throw from Nelson. That a Norton error. Base hit. I'm giving that a base hit, absolutely. We'll have a pitcher circle conference. I don't think there's any consolation needed here. She's got three more batters to take care of and uh, call it a day. Hey Tom, I was just, uh, I was just talking to uh, Lily Morningstar. She says she's feeling great and she should be back next week. Thanks for the update. It's Mike Terosian on camera. And, uh, our update guy for the Hillers, behind the the, our behind the scenes update guy for the Hillers team. As Di Benedetto set to step in. One on, no outs. So the Hillers break up the no hitter. Can they break up the shutout? Outside. One and oh. Fouled away. One and one. Well, this is a good part of the batting order for the Hillers to try to break up the shutout. I'm a little surprised that the coach didn't have something to say, being up 11 nothing and breaking it up with a bunt. But all's fair in love and war, I guess, in TVL softball. That one inside. Well, you're trying to score runs and you know, Norton, I don't think there's any hard feelings as far as bunting. Norton's done it a few times in this game. Why not? It's part of the game. Two and two. That one inside. If they could only lay down 16 straight bunts, we'd have a tie ball game. All I know is if I'm the opposing coach and my team's down big and you're leaving your pitcher out there to try to get a no-hitter, I'm trying to break it up. That one's upstairs, and there's a walk. Di Benedetto will get first. Two on, no outs. Lindsay Whittles to the plate. Yesterday's hero. Uh, did you see this? <laughs> Nelson may be running into some trouble here. Let's keep in mind this is her fourth straight game. That one down low. She's pitched a lot of innings of softball over the last few days. I believe there was a couple of uh, mercies in there, some five or six inning mercies, but it's definitely uh, what, around 25 innings or more. One and one. Hit in the air, foul out of play behind the backstop. One and two to Whittles. Taylor base runners will not be taking any chances down 11-0. They gotta hope to string together a lot of hits. Never know. That one's fouled away. Nelson d definitely is uh, seems to be a little bit tired out there. A little slower between pitches. Not as much velocity. Whittle's been on this last couple of pitches. Maybe a changeup. Nope. Showing off the velocity there, but low two and two. Swinging strike, there's out number one. Third time she struck out Whittles today. 14th strike out of the afternoon for Nelson. Love a new hitter for the Hillers here in the spot of Heather Hawley. Line up and the pitch inside. One and one.
There's a strike. It's Megan Vignani. Oh, excuse me. Liberta. There's Liberta at the plate. That one's fouled away. It's always difficult when you have players changing numbers constantly, which <laughs> has happened quite a few times with the Zillers softball team. The boys are getting smoked by Norton 10 to 1, so the girls shouldn't feel bad about their performance today. There's a strike, and that'll do it for Liberta. Two away. 15 strikeouts now for Nelson. Molly Bennett is the Hiller's last hope to break up the shutout. Swinging strike. She's been going in uh, inside on Bennett. I wonder if uh, Nelson heard us saying she's getting tired and it motivated her. Upstairs, one and one. I think it was Mike that was motivating her. Mike motivates me, I'll tell you. That one's inside, two and one. Call that a strike. I didn't like that call. That Again, she's trying to go inside on her. Maybe she's got the book on her. There's a ball, two and two. Two on, two outs. Molly Bennett facing a 2-2 two -two count. Inside, full count. I know Nelson wanted that. Molly Bennett is just waiting for her pitch. Swings at that one and strikes out. That'll do it. 16 strikeouts for Kelly Nelson. Another terrific pitching performance by the junior. And this time she takes down the Hopkinton Hillers. 11 to nothing is the final score. Norton scores 11 runs on 13 hits, commits one error. The Hillers, no runs on one hit. They committed six errors. A rough loss to take if you're the Hillers but certainly a good learning experience as Norton evens out the season series with Hopkinton at one win apiece. Kelly Nelson getting four shutouts in a row over the last four days, and she is certainly a whole lot of fun to watch pitch, and I'll look forward to seeing uh, this Norton team and how far they go in the postseason. And of course, the Hiller is expected to do big things in the postseason as well. But both teams at the top of the TVL, still a long way to go. Norton 14 and one overall on the season. So actually they have the edge over the Hillers as they have the better record, but both have the same TVL record as the Hillers fall to 11 and two on this season, but they also only have one league loss. The final score for the final time, the Norton Lancers defeat the Hopkinton Hillers by a final score of 11 to nothing. For Mike Terosian on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this H-Camp presentation of Hopkinton Hillers softball. Enjoy the rest of your day, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll talk to you soon.